Damn Sage, you really are becoming the little errand boy of the Kiloha house, aren't you? It was day two of our matriarch, Autumn Kiloha, gone on her business trip in San Mishuno, not to worry, because her family was keeping busy back at home in Evergreen Harbor. Shanna Kiloha's little brother Voldemar Kibo was still depressed from his brother's death, Shanna routinely comforting him throughout the day, while the new family dog Tate was exploring her comfortable new home and spending time with her new friends, Aurora had really taken a liking to her new puppy, so much so that she he posed out of excitement. Sage practiced his magic until it was time to go to school, excited to help his mom Shanna break the news to Aurora about her spellcasting abilities. And speaking of Shanna, she had to go back to Henford Don Bagley to see the high priestess, Eva Shrivastava, to beg her for a second chance to become a part of her coven. She failed at doing what Eva had instructed. Eva may be slightly stoic and highly intimidating, but she wasn't a monster right? At least she hoped. She found Eva in her living room, staring intently into the woods. Eva had been expecting Shanna today, but what she wasn't expecting was to sense Shanna's energy. She knew something was wrong, and that's when Shanna informed her that her brother suddenly died two nights ago. He had a heart attack, and it was a shock to her entire family. It's been a very hard adjustment, and unfortunately, she wasn't able to get the 50 sprites Eva asked her to. She was sorry, asking for an extension maybe a week or so, so she can have time to plan her brother's funeral. Eva was deeply sorry to hear about Shanna's loss. She completely understood why Shanna was unable to get the task done. She would grant Shanna another chance, but she wouldn't be getting a week-long extension. She will give her 72 hours. Shanna needs to learn to spellcast through grief. In fact, it can be quite a powerful tool. She wasn't doing this to harm her, but to help her, well... At least, she got an additional day out of it, but it didn't necessarily sit right with Shanna that Eva wouldn't grant her a week. I mean, come on, her brother just died. This sitch is actually angry. Have we even seen her angry before? But Shanna couldn't let her anger get in the way. She was given another chance. And now, she must make the most out of it. Right around this time was when the kids got out of school. Sage using his newfound wealth to treat everybody to Boba a thriftier. He also felt really bad for his uncle Voldemar, and thought that getting him out of the house might do him some good. The kids talked about all sorts of stuff, mainly about their new debit cards, as well as school, and their plans to go to the boardwalk after they're done with their boba. All while this millennial ass fashion show was going on in the background. The ghetto, oh my god, and Sage was finding it difficult to contain his excitement. Later tonight, Aurora would know the truth about her spellcasting powers and they could finally practice together. He couldn't wait to introduce her to the world of magic. He was in a silly, goofy mood, so he took a jab at the karaoke while Aurora nearly choked on the boba she ordered. Overall, the kids were having a good time. Even Voldemar, despite crying nearly the entire time. Afterwards, the Kilo Hakibo kids headed over to the boardwalk east of Thriftier, Sage demanding everyone to join him for a quick swim at the beach. And yes, that included sadly little Voldemar, your trash brother is not worth all this sadness. The kids continued chatting while swimming, wondering how their mama Autumn's work trip in San Michuno was going, how summer break would be happening soon, and how fun it would be having the new family pet Tate around. They splashed, they laughed, Oasis did a back float, and Sage made up some spooky story about the boardwalk to tease Aurora with before they head on over. But she knew not to believe her goofy brother, maybe that would work on Oasis, not her. Speaking of Oasis, once the foursome finally left the beach and arrived at the boardwalk, she had a strong desire to go on the Ferris wheel with someone, Uncle Voldemar deciding to take her. While Sage and Aurora waited, they hit up the ice cream stand, Sage ordering some cookie dough ice cream and Aurora ordering mint chocolate chip. And since they had this time all to themselves, Sage saw an opportunity. He just couldn't help it. He had to tell her something about tonight. He didn't 
won't go into specifics. But he told Aurora that tonight, once they get home, mom was going to fill her in on a big family secret. And it's going to change her life forever. Aurora was intrigued. A life-changing family secret. She begged him to tell her what it was. But there was no point. It was almost curfew anyways. And Shanna would be telling her the second they get back. She didn't want to wait any longer. So after Oasis and Voldemar were done on the Ferris wheel, they made their way back to Evergreen Harbor. Girl gross, not you drooling from wiggling your loose tooth. Shanna was sat, potion of plentiful needs in hand, waiting patiently for the kids to be home for curfew, and home in time they were. Just as Oasis began to crack open her homework, Shanna told her it can wait until later. She needed to have a really important conversation with both of the girls, both of them. Her, Rora thought this was just about her, but the truth is that Oasis wasn't necessarily in tune with her own gift either, and Shanna didn't want her to feel left out. Sage sat down and observed as he heard the words leave Shanna's lips. She explained to Aurora that she hones the gift of magic, and Oasis hones the gift of the moon. Aurora was something called a spellcaster, and Oasis was something called a werewolf, with the random, impulsive howling she did at times. Oasis may have already figured her gift out, or maybe she saw her Aunt Renis may rampage in beast form. From time to time, she has the same gift, and will be able to shapeshift into beast form once she becomes a teenager. Since Oasis did not inherit this gift from Shanna, but from Autumn, and Autumn has not manifested herself into a werewolf on purpose, Shanna wasn't too educated on werewolfism and what powers Oasis may develop over time. However, she knows many family members that would be able to mentor her, and she would be asking for their help once Oasis ages up. Oasis couldn't believe it. She's a glorified dog. As a nature lover and animal whisperer, she was thrilled. But Aurora was growing impatient. She wanted to know more about this gift she had. The term spellcaster sounded familiar. It's what she heard her Aunt Renisme and Uncle Dexter talking about not too long ago. Yes, Shanna told her daughter she was in fact a spellcaster, and so was Sage. And Aurora inherited her gift as well. What this means is that Aurora can perform spells, create potions, and use spellcasting to help her day-to-day -day life. There's a whole secret world called called the realm of magic, a safe haven for spellcasters to mingle and learn. She would love to take her there as soon as possible. Rora couldn't believe what she was hearing. She's able to perform magic. And now, it was time for her to finally witness it for herself. She walked outside with her family, Shanna telling her along the way that the key to using magic is to simply want it, and the magic will do the rest of the work. So she let herself go. And there it was, right in front of her very eyes, coming out from her hands. She was in awe, complete disbelief. There was no way this wasn't a dream, right? But it wasn't. She really was a spellcaster. Sage coming over to give her the best hug ever and congratulate her. He was really looking forward to exploring spellcasting with her. And she felt the same. Oasis came over to congratulate her as well. Magic looked really cool. And she was a bit sad it was something she didn't have. But secretly, Rora was thrilled that her sister didn't have the same gift as her ever since becoming children. She felt like Oasis had everything she ever wanted. Now Oasis would have a taste of what that felt like. Aurora always felt out of place. In her family, at school, in the world. Maybe this was why. Maybe it's because she has this pent-up magic inside of her that she never knew she was able to use. Well, that was finally going to change. She was a spellcaster. And she was going to embrace her gift to the fullest.